are the Dallas Mavericks true NBA contenders for an NBA championship? This is the gray area right here on Kevin Gray Sports. My name is Kevin Gray. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. You can catch me on your home of the Cowboys and Texas Rangers 105 through the fan every single weekend. The Dallas Mavericks find themselves 18 and 7 since February 6th. That is the fourth best record in all of the NBA in that 25 game span. And now find themselves a season high six games above 500 at 27 and 21. Now also 16 and 11 on the road after a successful four and one road trip where they won their last four basketball games, including holding the New York Knicks and the Washington Wizards below 90 points. This is a team also in the last 10 basketball games, specifically number four in the NBA in offensive rating at 118.6 and also number five in the NBA in defensive rating at 105.3. That is the kind of balance that is struck by a team that's finding itself being much more consistent when its stars have been on the floor, when they have bought into the defensive game plans of defensive coordinator Jamal Mosley and Rick Carlisle, and more importantly, sitting down and guarding on a consistent basis night overnight. I don't care who they play, whether it's a Bradley Beal less Washington Wizards basketball team or a team in the New York Knicks who went eight plus minutes in the fourth quarter in their game at home against the Mavericks without scoring a bucket. The winning habits that this team is developing over the last 25 games and more importantly as they look to this stretch run now where they have several games coming up at home, several important games coming up at home, including against the Utah Jazz, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Philadelphia 76ers before they have a couple of late April dates with the Los Angeles Lakers, who, by the way, are only up two games in the loss column to the Dallas Mavericks. Very important when you start thinking about the context of the Western Conference standings and where the Mavericks currently sit relative to the play-in tournament and where they are still trying to go as far as moving up the Western Conference standings. They still find themselves three and a half games behind the Portland Trail Blazers. They're still finding themselves behind the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Lakers. But the way that the Lakers have started to free fall just a bit without its stars in terms of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, there may be an opportunity for this Dallas Mavericks team to make the kind of move up the Western Conference to get out of that dreaded seven spot where you have to participate in the play-in tournament to try and guarantee yourself a spot in the Western Conference playoffs this season. But there have been a lot of tremendous efforts on this basketball team, specifically in Jalen Brunson. We've talked about this 25-game span that the Dallas Mavericks find themselves 18-7. and seven. For Jalen Brunson, who's become one of the best role players and one of the best backup point guards in all of the NBA, has a true shooting percentage of over 64%, nearly averaging nearly 14 points in that 25-game span. He has proven himself valuable to this team, whether it be a closer in the fourth quarter, coming up with big clutch free throws, as we saw against the Boston Celtics. This player has developed himself from a former National College Player of the Year to one of the best and most reliable backup point guards in all of the NBA. And the combination of him and Luka Doncic when they're on the floor together continues to grow as far as their chemistry is concerned. But more importantly, the trust and the reliability of a Jalen Brunson for Rick Carlisle has become one of the biggest sticking points this season for a Dallas Mavericks basketball team. Obviously, things start and end with Luka Doncic and the efficiency that he is starting to show from the three-point line is turning him into one of the most unguardable players in all of the NBA. Having his shooting percentage creep up month over month, where at points he has shot over 40% from the three-point line, gives this Mavericks offense a new dimension when he is hitting the ball from downtown with the kind of consistency and regularity that makes defenses really pick their poison and how they defend Luka Doncic. We already know how good of a creator he is, how good of a passer he is, how much of an inside presence in terms of his scoring is when he's able to get people on his hip 
and go to the basket. A guy who has a restricted field goal percentage of nearly 70% this season, just a shade under 69% for Luka Doncic when he's inside the paint and inside the restricted area. So whether he's shooting the ball from the three-point line, getting inside into the restricted area, making tough shots, this is a player whose offensive game is rounding into the kind of form where the completeness of his offensive game is really becoming a huge problem for the rest of this league. Also, Christoph Porzingis, especially in the second half, has become more of a, of a defensive anchor. You saw earlier in this year he was having trouble sitting down and guarding some of the lateral movement. Wasn't necessarily there. Appeared to be a little bit stiff in the lane. As this season has gone on, as he's played more and more minutes in the first quarter, gaining the kind of rhythm that he says that he needs, he has turned into the kind of unicorn that the Dallas Mavericks thought that they were getting when they traded for him from the New York Knicks. You saw glimpses of that during the bubble season where going into March before the bubble actually occurred in Orlando. He was playing with the kind of unicorn ferocity that you were looking for. And then when he got into the bubble and into the playoffs against the Los Angeles Clippers, you saw his ability to drop 30 points on a night when he wanted to and be kind of the defensive and offensive presence that the Mavericks have needed. So now as we spin this forward for a Dallas Mavericks basketball team who has shown the maturity of being able to win games on the road despite the adversity of a Rick Carlisle having a false positive COVID test, games being missed by Josh Richardson and Maxi Kleba still waiting on the return and the debut of one J.J. Redick. You've gotten terrific contributions from Nicolo Melli in his first four or five basketball games with this Mavericks team. His ability to be a veteran presence, stretch the ball from the three-point line, a smart basketball player with a high IQ, making the correct basketball plays. Nicolo Melli has found himself as a stretch four and five that has been able to put himself in a position where he has become and will become down the stretch a key rotational player given how this team likes to use its seven, eight, and now potentially nine-man rotation with the additions of J.J. Redick and now Nicolo Melli playing the kind of minutes that he is playing. So we've talked about at times the perimeter defense and the perimeter scoring needing to be much more consistent. Tim Hardaway as veteran of a presence as he is, as good of a three-point shooter as he has been, can still sometimes be streaky. But during the second half also, he has found himself stepping up in big moments. So you're finding contributions from a lot of different players in a lot of different roles. Dorian Finney-Smith, after coming back from COVID, has found himself shooting the three ball with much more regularity and much more consistency. I mentioned Tim Hardaway. One of the big differences in his game is his ability to drive the ball to the basket and do so with the kind of ferocity that is making defenses have to choose how they defend him when he's showing much more confidence taking the ball to the basket. All this to say is that a team now finding itself six games above 500, a season high of six games above 500, are doing the things on both ends of the floor that true championship contenders do. And I don't care who you do it against. Defending, shooting the ball from the three-point line with the kind of efficiency and regularity that Luka Doncic is doing with, and then being able to go out on the road and win basketball games that you need to to start giving you the kind of confidence that not only can you go into other people's buildings and win games, but you can come back home and hopefully have that same kind of success where the Mavericks have struggled at home at various points during this season. This is a team that's playing with a lot more confidence these days, but they're doing it collectively as a team and buying in to all of the things that this team has preached that they would do going into this season. Rick Carlisle talked about it all season long, that the upside of this Mavericks team was on the defensive end. Over the last 10 games and in the 25 games in the second half, they are showing the kind of upside defensively that he expected from them. It's not too shabby when you've got a defensive rating of number five in the NBA and holding your last two opponents to under 90 points, no matter who you've played. Those things translate to winning basketball. And let me not forget your man Bobby out there who had a season high 15 points and a season high 12 rebounds in that game against the Washington Wizards stepping in on short notice for a Christoph Porzingis who was held out during for injury recovery. I know folks are getting on me like Kevin. We need to see Luka Doncic. We need to see Christoph Porzingis playing out there night overnight. And I say I hear you. 
And for the most part, I agree with you. I did a video talking about how I want to see them out there and turn loose more consistently during this second half of the year. But the Mavericks have a plan and we have to somewhat trust the process, if you will. But the process so far, at least in the last 25 basketball games, has produced the fourth best record in all of the NBA. And when you got games against Utah, Houston, Milwaukee, and the Philadelphia 76ers coming up, we'll really see how true of a contender this Mavs team really is when you start playing the upper echelon teams, especially a Utah basketball team that throttled you not once, but twice in their building. And then you've got the reigning defending league's MVP and Giannis coming. And then the potential league's MVP this season and Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers coming all sandwiched in between a trip to Houston to take on the Houston Rockets. We're going to find out how good this team really is playing some of the best basketball teams in all of the association. But for now, the Mavericks are turning a corner and it's fun to watch. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. We will be giving you coverage from the American Airlines Center for the Utah Jazz, also the Milwaukee Buck and Philadelphia 76er game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notifications so that you can see all the videos from the American Airlines Center for the Dallas Mavericks as they finally return home after a season-long five-game road trip. This has been the Gray Area. We'll talk to you later. Peace.